could here during the final phases of the count. Now two minutes and ten seconds and counting. The Atlas has uh, control. The uh, Gina destruct system has been armed. We're at T-minus two minutes and counting. Liquid oxygen tanking has been secured. Those vents are closed. T-minus one minute, 46 seconds and counting. Jimmy launch control, T minus one minute, 38 seconds and counting. The ignition system has been armed. We will be ready to turn on the sequencer at the 18 second mark in the countdown. Now one minute and 26 seconds and counting. Back at Lodge Complex 19, astronauts John Young and Mike Collins getting reports on the uh, status of the countdown, but they will not be able to see the launch. T minus one minute, 13 seconds and counting. The launch vehicle now is completely on internal power as we come up toward the one minute mark. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. The helium supply that pressurizes the vehicle is now on internal power. T minus 50 seconds and counting. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. For most of the remainder of the time, the launch vehicle test conductor in Complex 14 will be looking at a series of ready lights on his console. They will turn from amber to green as the automatic sequencer clicks off the various events. Now coming up on 25 seconds and counting. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 19, 18. We have the automatic sequencer in. Now 15 seconds and counting. Be aiming toward ignition at four. T minus 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And we've got a lift off and it looks like 46 seconds after the hour. seconds. Plus 50 seconds. And the flight director chain checks with range safety. He says we look good. One minute, six seconds. through the area of maximum dynamic pressure for the Atlas. One minute, 20 seconds. One minute and 35 seconds, and we have completed now a 20, 30 second period of steering. Uh, which went very nicely. The altitude about 20 miles and we're about 25 miles downrange. Mark two minutes. Coming up on booster engine cutoff and flight dynamics says everything looks good to him. Miko, two minutes, uh, 15 seconds into the flight. Miko programmed at two minutes, 11 seconds. It looked like it occurred right on the mark. Our booster engines have dropped away. The 57,000 pound thrust sustainer now driving the vehicle up and out over the Atlantic. Two minutes, 50 
seconds, the range safety observer confirms that everything looks good to him from his post at the Cape. Mark three minutes, altitude uh, 60 miles, we're 125 miles downrange. Next major event coming up at 4 minutes and 39 seconds. That will be the sustainer engine cutoff point. We are presently showing 3 minutes 25 seconds. There's a 52 second coast until the primary secondary propulsion system lights off on the Agena. And approximately a little more than one minute later, we should have primary propulsion uh, light off on the Agena. We're five minutes and 20 seconds, and we look good in all respects. is the thing that caused so much trouble once before, you'll remember. Altitude 155 nautical miles, and we're 700 miles downrange. Seven minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Seven minutes. 
minutes, 38 seconds into the flight, and the flight director, as he pulls the FIDO console then, or the Agena console like, again and again, gets a looks good report. They're 160 miles now in altitude. They want 161. About 900 miles down range. Eight minutes and three seconds into the flight. And we're approximately one minute away from uh, the Agena engine shutdown. They want an orbit of 161 miles circular. seconds, the Gina reports a little intermittent, uh, some intermittency on the telemetry signal, but it's generally continuing a good, healthy signal. The Agena now leveling out at the 161 mile mark, nine minutes. miles down range. We've got cut off on the primary propulsion system. Agena, the Agena controller advises we had a normal shutdown. Now we will wait uh, a report from Flight Dynamics. He advises that uh, the cutoff looked nominal in all respects to him, the Flight Dynamics officer. Commands now being sent to the Agena to disable the command destruct system receivers aboard. Ten minutes into the flight. Well, the first of two highly critical events came off precisely on time. Uh, well, almost precisely on time. They wanted to lift off at 39 minutes and 44 seconds after the hour. It appears that they lifted off at 39 minutes and 46 seconds after the hour. But that is, uh, that's close enough, certainly. And they wanted a circular orbit of 161 miles. The last report they had, they had achieved 160, and uh, I presume they'll get the 161. We will have... Uh, number 10 in orbit circling below number eight and in a little while we'll have the spacecraft in orbit circling below both of them david they had a choice frank and um, i was thinking a minute ago that how the more complicated it becomes and the more elaborate representations and um, models and mock-ups we have it always winds up with frank mcgee at the blackboard with a piece of chalk they, until I saw you there with that chalk. Well, that's very kind of you, David. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's the truth. Um, they had a choice between letting the Agena catch up with the spacecraft or letting the spacecraft catch up with the Agena. And they have decided on the latter. Standing down here in this swamp, Frank, looking across at the rocket takeoff, it occurred to me that color television is beautiful, but the sight with your eyeballs of a rocket taking off is uh, almost indescribable. The, uh, even in the brilliant sunlight, the fire at the tail of it is uh, so intense it is slightly painful to your eyes. The power is so great it shakes the earth more than a mile away. And the sound is so intense that if somehow it couldn't be done, but if somehow it were fed into your television set the way it really sounds, it probably would blow out all the tubes and blow up the speaker. Rattle it right off the shelf. I'm sure it would. It's really a gorgeous sight. You know the thing that impressed me? What's that? Uh, is uh, despite the enormous size of the rocket, how small it looks really when it gets up there against the, the entire, against the blue. Because there's nothing there to compare it to. Mm -hmm. If we could send up, say, an automobile or something along with it to give you a point of reference, then you could see how big it is. The uh, Saturn they're setting up over here with Frank, which you've seen, um, is about, let's see, I think seven times the size of the Atlas. So big, in fact, that they have catwalks inside of it. 
And the men who work on it don't work on catwalks around it as they do with the atlas. They work on catwalks inside. It's like a building with stairways in it. Well, we'll be back for the uh, all the details. Uh, the next launch is about, uh, let's see, about 50 minutes from now.